Please be seated. The court is now back in session. And again, I'd like to hand the floor to Kills and Paul Defense to continue putting questions to this witness. Do you have the floor? Gong on. Thank you, Mr. President. And Mr. No, before the break, we spoke about the policies of the Communist Party of Cambodia. And that you spoke about instruction or guidelines of uh, providing uh, enough food supply to the people. And now I'd like to ask you some questions regarding the different stands of the cadres, that is, those who were at the best, as in your case. And you spoke briefly about that. Can you also tell the court about the administration or the uh, stands of the uh, cadres at each uh, district level? And uh, did you observe uh, any difference uh, from one district to another in terms of uh, management or administration? Witness. I cannot uh, tell you that. In particular, in uh, dealing with the details of this matter in each district. Question. If you were to compare the situation in various uh, districts or in various uh, communes that you worked, in particular the three communes that you, you worked, of course, you worked uh, with cadres at the district level. Did you work with the same cadres, or did you work with uh, different sets of uh, cadres at the district level? Answer. There were different or various people at uh, the district level. Uh, namely, uh, initially there was the Q, and then there was the Jim, and still uh, later on there was uh, the Kut and the San, who was transferred from uh, 108. And to my recollection. These are these were the individu individuals that I worked with uh, at the district level. Question. Did you understand uh, their position in terms of uh, their planned implementation? For instance, Council, if you, uh, you don't understand, allow me to uh, refresh it. Here I refer to the imp implementation of the uh, CPK policies. Answer. I cannot make any uh, conclusion on that. However, from my observation concerning uh, their leadership, that Jim and Tasan were rather strict, and they were more specific on the technical issues. However, besides that, they were kind of uh, friendly and outgoing. Question. Also uh, concerning the CPK policies, did you experience or were you aware of any instruction that you deem? Reverse and 
impro inappropriate uh, policy that was imposed uh, on the commune labor and that you hate uh, to implement it? Answer, I cannot make any conclusion on that as I was not an expert in uh, making uh, such an assessment. Question. In relation to uh, some individuals in your commune, that is, uh, for instance, at the Srai Drunung commune, and that, uh, as you stated, there was no arrest or, or people were not sent to for study session. And you said that uh, some cadres were very strict in the uh, plan implementation. And my question is uh, the following. Were they strict or were they fully compliant with the implementation of the CPK policies? That is on uh, trying to work hard to find uh, food for the people. Answer. Reverse uh, my understanding that everybody had a different uh, working uh, style. Some people were absolute with the CPK principles, and that was in conjunction with their personal working style. And sometimes what they did was in excess of the requirement of a, such a policy. Council, I have a, a last question to put to you. I actually asked you a question about uh, the delegation visits, and you said that there was a Chinese uh, delegation who came to visit at once. And while you uh, were a member of the Liebo Commune Committee, did you ever see purport accompanied uh, any delegation for the visit of Libo Commune? Answer. I never saw Pol Pot come to visit. During uh, the one delegation visit, I heard Hassan uh, spoke about Ying Sari, though I did not know or know the physical appearance of Ying Sari. I only heard that Hassan, Hassan talked about it. Question. What about uh, kill some pawn? Did you kill some pawn? Did you see kill some pawn come uh, to visit your cooperative or liberal commune with uh, a, a delegation, for instance? President, uh, Mr. Witness, please observe uh, the microphone. Witness. I only heard uh, the name of uh, Mr. Kiyosam Porn, but I never met him and I never saw him. Question Did Kiyosam Porn ever visit uh, Libo Commune or Cooperative during the time that you were a member of the Libo Commune Committee? Answer, no, he did not. 
Mr. President, I don't have any uh, question for this witness, and I'd like to see the floor to my uh, colleague, President, and Mr. Vekan, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon. I am Mr. Q. Sampons, International Co. Lawyer, and I have a few questions to ask you to complete today's work. A few moments ago, you stated that the party required of you to increase the population and then to feed it. And you also talked about cadres who had absolute power. I think that was the term that you used, at least in French. And my question is, these people who were exercising absolute power, were they following the party line in terms of the instruction to increase the population and to nourish it, or were they outside the party line? Those who did, in fact, they uh, adhered to the uh, party line. Why do you say that their power was absolute? What exactly do you mean when you say that? As I stated, those people whom I said were absolute means that they would carry out the full instruction imposed by the upper echelon. May what I don't really understand, sir, is that if you take it that the party line was to increase the population and to nourish it properly, then absolute power was something good. Is that what you're telling us? Yes, that is correct. Mr. Witness, I would like to come back to when you took up politics, so to speak, and when you were interviewed in 2009 by the investigators from the OCIJ, you said that you were appointed as a group head by the Khmer Rouge when they reached your region, which they took possession of, and you were then appointed as the head of the group. I think it was a mutual assistance group. So I'd like you to tell us why you were chosen. Was it because you already were involved in politics, you were close to the Khmer Rouge already, or was there another reason for which you were chosen to lead that group? At that time, I was appointed a group uh, leader. In fact, uh, before that, I did not uh, participate in any politics of the Khmer Rouge. However, at that time, uh, 12 families were, created, were uh, chosen, that is, those who had the ability to read or to write. And in that case, those people were selected to be group leaders for the mutual assistance uh, groups. Can it be stated accurately that the mutual assistance group were the ancestors of the cooperatives?
Yes, uh, the Mr. Assistant uh, Groups assisted before the establishment of the cooperatives. At that time, young people became soldiers, and the, those who were behind uh, joined uh, the Mutual Assistant Groups, and we still uh, had the right to own our property and uh, uh, land. So the Khmer Rouge made you the head of the group without any particular reason. You were chosen without really understanding why they had selected you. Is that the case? After the coup d'etat to topple Prince Sihanou, in my area that I live, the Khmer Rouge came to take control. There were no longer any lunar soldiers in the area. For that reason, in fact, uh, I was actually forced uh, to uh, be part of uh, the mutual assistance uh, groups, and I, as I was afraid of them, I just did what I was asked to do. Thank you very much. So just to be absolutely clear, you don't know why you were chosen to be head of that group. Is that correct? Yes, that is true. I did not know. And when they arrived, they just uh, appointed me uh, to be in that position. Is it true that one of the duties of the mutual assistance groups was to distribute food among the population? The mutual assistance groups would share the produce that we jointly made, but we ate privately that is only with our uh, family members. And people were put into three different categories, that is uh, depending on their strengths uh, to work. For example, for the first uh, unit or the first group, it means the full force. And the, the second one would be with the uh, half force. And the third group would be the, the weaker one. And the produce would be shared according to this uh, level of strength. And did you get more food when you were strong or when you were weak? Yes, uh, that is true because the full stand group will receive more rice yield. So it the, the rice gear will be distributed based on the actual strength of uh, the groups. When you were interviewed by the investigating judges in 2009, you referred to difficulties in sharing out the harvest among these mutual assistance groups, and you said that this uh, system was not particularly uh, fair. Can you tell us why this uh, system wasn't very egalitarian? Thank you. Uh, 
as I stated, those who were stronger, even if uh, the numbers of the uh, group was less, would receive more yield than those who had uh, less strength, although their, uh, their, their number was more than uh, the first uh, group. And uh, even if uh, in uh, certain cases, uh, some individuals who were at full strength received more yield, but they had uh, their family members who were younger children or, or who with uh, weak strength. For that reason, they could not have sufficient uh, food uh, for their family members. Did people try to find solutions to solve those problems? And if they did, what were the solutions that you saw them finding for this inequality in the distribution? It seemed there was no a solution to that problem as uh, at that time the evolve was still ongoing. Look, may we, uh, President, Council, it seems that your line of question is out of the scope of the facts put before this chamber for uh, discussion. Please try to put questions related to, to the facts within the scope of this trial, as well as the temporal jurisdiction of 17 April 1975 to 16 July uh, 1979. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to do, Mr. President, with my next question. Mr. Witness, can the establishment of the cooperatives be understood as being designed to provide a solution to this difficulty in equal distribution of produce that you encountered in the mutual assistance groups? the issue of the establishment of uh, cooperatives. I did not have a deep understanding of it as it was organized uh, by the upper echelon and that people had to uh, join to our common or communal uh, dining hall. At that time, people had their family members working at the front of battlefield or had their elderly parents and then they organized this uh, common uh, dining hall so we uh, would eat uh, jointly and then we would be in uh, equal status. While we were uh, working, the mutual assistance uh, groups, the sharing was not uh, even as uh, some families would have more food to eat while others uh, did not. And because we were Buddhist uh, practitioners, we had to see uh, this point. And uh, some people could not even go and find a fish because they were uh, in the elderly stage of their age. Is it true to say that once eating was communal, the food was distributed more fairly. Then I saw that people had an equal chance to uh, join the communal eating.
Donc, du point So, in terms of distributing meals, it was better. Is that true? prefer to compare the food uh, that we eat that is uh, privately and uh, commonly people had uh, different views some said that they they ate they could eat more while they they ate uh, privately but for those who had more family members uh, prefer the uh, common eating Let's now turn now to another subject, which is the secret agents in the commune and the arrests that were made. In your written record of witness interview of 2009, these secret agents are sometimes identified as security agents, but there's also the term secret agent itself, which surprises me somewhat, but be that as it may, can you tell us who sent the letters for the arrest to be made when there were letters? Were these letters sent directly to the secret agents themselves, as you yourself said in 2009? Yes, uh, that is correct. And who were the letters for? From which authority sent the arrest letters? I did not see that letter. However, it was possible that the letter could be sent from the district chief or from the uh, security. And this is purely uh, my personal conclusion as I did not uh, see it uh, personally. What surprises me is that in your 2009 hearing, E3 stroke 5521. Uh, in question 42, you are asked how you are aware of all of these things since you haven't seen the actual letters. And you say, I quote, I knew because the commune militia reported to the commune. End of quote. And so my question is, why didn't the secret agent report to those who sent them the letters rather than reporting to the commune, which was not behind the original initiative? The commune militia reported to the uh, commune, and also they made a copy and reported uh, to the uh, security. And that is in relation to the security uh, situation or matter that happened within uh, the commune. Et la sécurité, c'était le district. And security, that was the district, was it? Answer. The security would be in charge of this matter. I did not know whether they were the, the sector or the district.
Actually, the Tramka dist district uh, was in charge. Thank you. Coming back once again to the question of food. Local cadres such as yourself, were you um, fed in the same way as the rest of the population in the units, for example? Come up. Answer. Local countries and uh, people were eating in the same uh, cooperative. We had the same food. During a special occasion, perhaps we had a surplus in relation to the food. Is it excellent to reserve your cadre? And was that surplus reserved for the cadres? Answer, yes, uh, the surplus uh, was for uh, those who were in the meeting, but uh, this does not uh, happen, this did not happen very quite often. Est-ce que vous avez... Did you ever hear of the existence of a black market as regards the food distributed under the Khmer Rouge regime, was there any trafficking of food? Answer, I never heard of it. Vous avez expliqué, uh, you told this chamber Je reviens en arrière, monsieur. I will backtrack a little, sir. It appears the question on trafficking wasn't very clear. I'll ask it again. During the democratic Cambodia regime from 1975 to 1979, in the three communes in which you worked, did you ever hear of the existence of some kind of trafficking or exchange or battering of food. Do you know whether there was another way of recovering food? Answer, I never heard of uh, this matter. Vous avez expliqué à cette... You explained to this chamber, as well as to the co-investigating judges, investigators, that you concealed part of the surplus rice produced in your commune. And I would have uh, like to ask you how you did it, because you also explained that you had to... Uh, issue reports on rice production in the district. You said that you lied in those reports, but there must have been some kind of uh, audits. How do you explain how it was so easy for you to conceal the rice harvest, or part of the rice harvest? I'm sorry, I, I told this morning, for example, we had uh, the produce of rice for a certain amount of 1,000 bags. I uh, would report only 700 bags to the top, and the 300 uh, would be kept in the banner or in the warehouse. And if the district did not come to check and to verify, it, uh, we would keep uh, those surplus so that uh, people could have enough food. 
to eat. I was afraid uh, that the upper echelon would know about the surplus which I kept in the banner or in the warehouse. People in my area, they uh, were friendly and uh, we kept uh, the 300 back, as I said, so, and I would report only the amount that I uh, said earlier. Alors oui, j'entends bien, monsieur, mais... Yes, I do very well understand, sir, but still in that first uh, record, E3-5125, you explained that the district came to look for rice after you declared the quantities produced, and that is why I wanted to ask this question. If the districts came to uh, look for rice in the warehouses and you uh, hit some rice and didn't declare it, it means that the districts closed their eyes to such practices. They were blind to such practices. Can you be more specific on how you managed to do that? The document was E3 slash 5521, the interpreter corrects. Answer. Later, the district and the sector came to collect uh, the surplus based on the report because they uh, had the report and it's the report said that a certain amount could be provided for people who eat. So the sector and the district uh, came to collect uh, the certain amount of the rice that uh, we kept in the uh, warehouse and uh, search uh, was not conducted at that time. Je voudrais être certain de I just want to be sure that I have properly understood your testimony. You are telling us that you were caught and the sector and the district finally came to get the rise you didn't declare. Is that correct? Answer, I would like to I would like you to clarify your question once again because I could not get it clearly. My question my question has to do with the practical method whereby you concealed part of the rice yield in your commune in order to improve the living standards of your fellow inhabitants. You stated that you sent reports to the district and you concealed part of the rice harvest. In the report, you would declare a yield that was lower than the real harvest. And I asked you where you kept that part of the rice yield that you did not declare, where did you keep that surplus? In fact, you stated that that surplus was kept in the warehouse, but you also stated that the district came to fetch the part that you declared. And it appears to me that by coming to take the declared yield, the district could observe that uh, you were keeping a surplus somewhere else. My question was, how did you manage to conceal that surplus? <coughs> Answer. I would like to clarify on this point. The, the right yields, as I said, was kept in 
the warehouse in the respective uh, cooperatives. Actually, the district had the the data in uh, the report concerning the rice yield to be provided to people. So the district would come to fetch only uh, the rice yield as stated in the report. So the female units and the male units would come to, to collect or, and fetch uh, that amount only for the sector. D'accord, donc. Very well. I fully understand your answer, and I would sum it up as follows. Those who came to collect the declared quantity were not concerned about the quantity that you concealed or kept behind. Is that correct? Answer. They did not concern about that. They came to fetch only the amount that uh, they were asked to uh, fetch. J'ai encore deux sujets. I have two more topics to broach with you, Mr. Witness. The first has to do with the revolutionary flag. What do you understand by the revolutionary flag? Did you receive it often, occasionally? Yeah, but the Answer. Revolutionary flag. I never saw it. And I did not understand uh, why the, they had the revolutionary flag. If you do not understand what its purpose was, but you, you did indeed understand what it was, didn't you? Answer, I did not know what it was either. I only knew that uh, the the plaque uh, was depicted with uh, the uh, three towers of uh, Angkor Wat. Je vais préciser ma question. I will make my question more specific, Mr. Witness, because there seems to be a mix-up. When I talk of the revolutionary flag, I'm talking of the journal of the Khmer Rouge which uh, bore the title Revolutionary Flag. Uh, do you know about it? Did you read it? Did you often receive it? Answer, I never received uh, the Revolutionary Flag. I was not uh, provided with a copy or with any copies. Perhaps uh, the upper echelon received uh, revolutionary flags. Ma dernière question. My last question has to do with a subject which, on which questions were put to you this morning. It has to do with uh, commune secretaries. This morning, you explained that you yourself was assisted by a commune secretary, and that in each commune, there was a secretary. You stated that you yourself needed one because you were in the field most of the time on the work sites most of the time. You explained that the task of the community secretaries was to draft reports. My question is as follows. When you return from your work on the work sites where you had worked, did you have the time to read all those reports and to 
correct them before sending them to the authorities who had to receive them. Answer. The reports which were produced and drafted by the, the clerk or the secretary were never read or corrected by me. If uh, it was said that the report uh, was correct, uh, it would be sent to the district right away. D'accord, mais qui? Very well. But who cross-checked the report to make sure they were correct? Yeah, I say. Answer. The drafter uh, would do the verification. Donc, il est exact de dire. So it is correct to say, sir, that the commune secretary was somewhat autonomous in the manner in which he or she operated. Uh, but yeah. Answer, yes, that is correct. Je n'ai pas d'autres questions, monsieur. I have no further questions, Mr. President. Thank you, witness. Ma President, thank you, Mr. No, for spending your valuable time to provide your testimony before the chambers as a witness for two days and a half. Your testimony will contribute to finding justice in this case. Uh, your testimony comes to an end, and you may be accused, and uh, you may return to your destination as you wish. Please have a safe trip uh, back home. Court officer, you are instructed to facilitate and to send Mr. Witness uh, back to his uh, residence. Thank you as well for, for Mr. Duj Paris, the duty counsel. You may not be accused because uh, the president, the chamber would uh, like to put some uh, introductory questions to uh, the reserve witness. You may now be accused, uh, Mr. Witness, not no. Court officer, you are instructed to usher in the reserve witness uh, into the courtroom.
Good afternoon, Mr. Winnes. What is your name? Answer. My name is Ariel Son. President, thank you, Mr. Ariel Son. Could you tell the court uh, when uh, you were born? Uh, Mr. Ariel Son, please uh, wait uh, a little bit before you answer because you have to wait for the microphone to be activated. Here, there are interpretation in through three, there is interpretation in through three languages. So you have to wait a little bit sir, for the microphone activation. When you see the red light on the tip of the microphone, it, it means that the microphone is operational and you can provide your answer. Answer. I was born on the 30th of January 1938. President, thank you very much. Is it in 1938? Answer, yes, it is. President, thank you, Mr. Rizoson. Where were you born? Answer. I was born in Tom Village, Srai Nonong Commune, Tramka District, Takao Province. President, thank you. And what is your current address? Answer. My current address is at Preta Lai Village, Tropeang Tom Jung Commune, Tramka District, Takao Province. President, what is your occupation? Answer, I am uh, staying at home. President, thank you. What is your father's name and what is your mother's name? My father's name is Riel Sot. My mother's name is Gil Soy. President, thank you. What about your wife? What is her name? And how many children do you have together? Answer. My wife's name is Ya Yun. I have uh, five children together, including one daughter. President. Thank you, Mr. Rilson. Could you tell the court from 17 April 1975 to 6 January 1979, where did you live and what did you do? Answer. In that period, That is from 1975 to 1979. First, uh, I uh, worked in a farm in a field in my homeland. And after three months, I uh, became a repairman in uh, Tramka, that is District 105. Uh, later on, after one year, the district committee assigned me to be a med medic in the hospital of District 105. And I was the chief of the hospital at that time. And uh, I became the, a medic or the chief of the hospital until 1979. 
President, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Arias Son. The grave she made an oral report this morning that, uh, to your best knowledge, none of your father, mother, ascendants, children or descendants, brothers, sisters, in-laws or wife is admitted as a civil party in case 002. Is this information correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. President, have you taken a note already before you are here before the chamber? Answer, I have already taken a note. President, thank you, Mr. Rioson. The chamber would like to inform you of your rights and obligations as a witness. As a witness, as a witness in the proceedings before the chamber, you may refuse to respond to any question or to make any comment which may incriminate you. That is your rights against self-incrimination. This means that you may refuse to provide your response or make any comment that could lead you to being prosecuted. As a witness in the proceeding before the chamber, you must uh, respond to any question by the bench or relevant parties, except where your response or comment to those questions may incriminate you as the chamber has just informed you of your rights as a witness. As a witness, you must tell the truth that you have known, heard, seen, remembered, experienced, or observed directly about an event or occurrence relevant to the questions that the bench or parties pose to you. Do you understand your rights and obligations, Mr. Witness? Answer yes, I do. Mr. President, Mr. Rioson, have you ever provided statement or testimony to the investigator of the OCIJ, and where did it take place, and how many times did you provide your statements? Answer. I gave two statements on two occasions at the Bang Thom Jung Commune and uh, another one at the Khmer Rouge Tribunal. President, thank you, Mr. Rilson. Before you are here, have you read the statements which you gave to the investigator of the OCIJ already? Answer, yes, I have read them. President, to your recollection, to your best knowledge, do the statement reflect with the dough you gave to the investigator of the OCIJ? Answer, yes, uh, they are consistent with what I spoke at that time. President, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Rieson, it is now convenient time for the uh, adjournment. The court will resume the hearing of your testimony tomorrow. And uh, the international co-prosecutor will start uh,
their lines of questioning. Uh, the court uh, proceeding tomorrow will begin at 9 a.m. Please be informed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ritterson. The chamber have just, has just asked the introductory question concerning your background, and you have not yet uh, heard of uh, you have not yet uh, been you have not yet uh, been questioned by party or by the bench, and uh, you are invited to be here in the courtroom before 9 a.m. tomorrow. And for duty counsel, you are also invited uh, to be here before 9 a.m. Security personnel are instructed uh, to correction. The court officer, you are instructed to uh, bring uh, this witness uh, together with uh, the duty counsel, so back to their destination as they wish, and uh, bring them back uh, before 9 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Security personnel are instructed to bring uh, Mr. Nguyen Chi and Kiel Sam Pong back to the detention facility and have them returned tomorrow before 9 a.m. The court is now adjourned. So I'm